Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Are you struggling with getting your subject in focus or getting your camera to lock on to your subject? Or maybe even the wrong thing in the photo? In this video, I'm gonna help you diagnose your focus issues, solve them, and then fine tune your settings and your technique to make sure you capture every shot. If you stay till the end, I'll show you the easy tip that I use to get photos like this, this, and this. My name is Simon Dantremont. I'm a professional nature and wildlife photographer living in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature and wildlife photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let's start off by understanding how a camera autofocus system works. This will make my advice later on in the video make much more sense. DSLRs mainly use something called phase detect. That's where part of the light that's hitting the mirror is split off onto a focus chip, but split into two phases in doing so. If the two phases aren't in sync, the camera sends instructions to the lens to change the focus to try to bring the two phases together. Voila, I'm in focus. While this system is fast, the focus chip only sees a small part of what the sensor sees. This means that most of the time the focus points are all huddled into the center of the sensor. On the other hand, contrast detection, which is popular in mirrorless cameras, finds a rough focus and then racks in and out, back and forth, until it fine tunes the focus to be perfect. Just like me here, you move back and forth until it's just right. Despite the need for hunting back and forth, this system works very well and can be very fast. It also has two advantages. Number one, it uses the whole sensor, not just focus points in the center of the sensor. Also, you don't need to worry about the sensor being out of sync with the focus chip. Let's start tackling some of these focus issues. Issue number one is just having the wrong settings. Let's get that out of the way before we move on to other issues. Most cameras have at least two focus modes. The first mode is called one shot that freezes the focal plane at a certain point. It usually comes with a confirmation beep. If you keep your shutter pressed and keep taking photos, remember that your focus plane is locked at one spot. If your subject is moving around, your focus is not following that subject around. If your first photo in a series is sharp, but the rest of the photos are not sharp, this is often your problem. If you're shooting moving targets like sports, your kids playing, or wildlife, you want the focus point to follow your subject around. To do this, you need to set your camera on autofocus continuous. On Canon cameras, this is called servo, on Sony and Nikon, this is called AFC for autofocus continuous. On Fuji cameras, set your camera to the C mode. Issue number two is photographing subjects that lack contrast. That's because low contrast subjects are much more difficult for your camera to focus on. Remember when I put myself out of phase earlier, you could easily tell with two images superimposed that there's something wrong here. But what if the two images are monochromatic and very similar, like the sides of a brown deer? It's hard to tell in this case that the two photos are out of phase. Blackbirds like ravens or crows, a plain wall with no features, or a plain blue sky. These lack contrast and are difficult for your camera to figure out for focus. On the other hand, subjects with more contrast and detail, like the jersey of a referee, are much easier for your camera to focus on. So what do we do in these low contrast situations? I have a workaround for you. Focus on the edge of your subject, like on the edge of this deer, between the deer itself and the background. It provides a nice sharp edge, and by focusing on that, your camera should successfully focus. Issue number three is difficult lighting situations, particularly backlit or very dim situations. Dim situations are very difficult for your focus system because your focus system needs light to be able to operate. And this is difficult to mitigate because it's not a technique or a setting problem, this is a technology problem. One way to mitigate this is to move your subject to the light. So if you're taking a portrait, moving someone to a window, or if you're outdoors at night, moving them under a lamppost, for example. If you've got the time to set this up, there's actually another option for low light. Shine a light on your subject, focus on it, then turn your autofocus off, then turn off the light. I do this in my Milky Way photography when I wanna focus on something in the foreground, like a tree, for example, when the conditions are really dark. As we learned earlier, some systems need contrast to work. In really backlit situation where your camera sensor is flooded with light, it can be very low contrast, very hard to detect what your focus should be on. One way to mitigate this is for you to move or your subject to move so your subject is a little bit less backlit. In this situation of photographing this bird, the flooded backlighting was making it difficult for my camera to focus. I just moved a few feet off to the side and my camera was able to lock on. Issue number four is using too few or too many focus points. 
That's because most cameras can change the number of focus points that are active and you need to use the right number of focus points in the right situations. Remember, your subject needs to be under a focus point to be picked up by the camera and focused on. To change the number and orientation of focus points on a Canon camera, usually the button that controls this is on the upper right hand side of the back of the camera. On many Nikon cameras, there's an autofocus selection button on the front of the camera. You press that button and then scroll the wheel underneath the shutter button. Another way to access it is by hitting the info button and using the menu. On Sony cameras, press the function button and select it from the menu. On Fuji cameras, press the joystick button and use the upper thumb wheel. So if you have a moving target that you can't consistently keep a single focus point on, switch to multiple focus points. That way you will increase the odds that one of those focus points will hit your target. On the other hand, if you have a static or slow moving target and you have your camera set to multiple focus points, you're giving the camera too much opportunity to catch other things in the frame other than your subject. In those situations, you're better off reducing the number of focus points to a smaller zone in the center or a center focus point. Issue number five is your focus getting stuck on the background. This is something that's more common in mirrorless cameras and contrast-based detection systems. That's because when focused on the background, something in the close foreground is so out of focus that moving a little bit back and forth does not bring anything into focus. A potential solution for this is pointing at something else near your subject, a tree, a car, a building, or the ground right in front of your subject. Often that will make the camera's focus system pull all the way back closer to your subject. Another solution to this is to use the limiter switch on your lens if it has one. This is a switch that limits the range of focus possibilities that your lens can focus at. If your subject is guaranteed to be close, let's say you're shooting portraits, you can set the limiter to exclude focusing at infinity. That way it'll never get stuck far off into the distance. And I said if you stay till the end, I'll give you a bonus tip, and that's to use a technique called pre-focusing, which is very helpful in action photography. That's where you pre-focus your camera very close to where you expect the action to happen. If I think I'm likely to get some fast action at a certain distance to myself, I pre-focus on something where I think the action might happen. That way my camera locks on much more quickly and much more accurately than if it was focused really close to me or focused far in infinity. In these wildlife shots, I pre-focused near to where I knew the action would happen. It really improved the odds that we'd get a sharp, crisp photo well in focus. To note, if your photos are blurry, it may not be lack of focus. You may not have enough shutter speed to freeze the movement of your subject or to compensate for camera movement. I have a whole video on that, which you can check out right here. I'm confident that if you implement the tips in this video, you will improve the odds that your camera will focus on your subject the next time you go out. Go out there and take some amazing photos. I know you can do it.